Hello and welcome to Winging It. So I'm going to try something a bit different today. We are going to take a look at some strategy discussions. Now you might have seen a few early game strategy kind of videos. Uh, obviously that's quite a popular topic to discuss on the tournament's Discord server where people will post their starting hand scenarios or we even have a Discord bot that will generate starting hand scenarios for you to consider. So yeah, always a, a popular topic. Uh, I've done a few videos over on Tuck and Cash with Tay Ray talking about that kind of thing. Uh, so we are going to do that, but what we're also going to do uh, is we're going to play out the game until the final round, and then we're going to take a look at some late game strategy as well. So obviously, definitely that first decision for the starting hand, a really, really important one that kind of sets you up for the remainder of your game. Uh, and it's definitely one that I think you know, is worth practicing, especially if you're kind of newer at the game or you're just looking to improve. Uh, that's definitely a really key area to look at. But I also think that late game, that final round, uh, that could be so crucial. You know, there are a number of games that I've been involved in or that I've watched on the streams where I've been commentating. And you do notice some little mistakes can creep in in that final round where, you know, you're trying to work out if it's worth playing a bird or if it's just going to be laying eggs or, you know, maybe you've got one of those teal powers that you need to activate. There's always some real tricky decisions in that final round. So. Yeah, I think it is so important to make sure you can get those five turns done in the most efficient way and so you're not missing out on points because we see it time and time again, particularly on those live streams. You know, one point at the end of the game, it can make all the difference. So yeah, as I said, we are going to jump into a game. So uh, it's just going to be a standard game against the AI. Uh, I've put it on normal just because the, the hard AI is a bit unpredictable. And uh, yeah, you can get some quite strange games against that. So. Uh, we'll put it on normal and I'll put myself going first just because it makes it a bit more easier when you're kind of looking at the strategy stuff. So here we go. Let's get into the game and uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the starting hand and kind of discuss what the options are. So here we go. All in all, very, very happy with that. <laughs> if you see my videos before, you'll probably know exactly how this is going to go for me. So that feels quite straightforward. These two, uh, Bunting and Nightingale in the Grasslands. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward that, you know, you're going to lay eggs, you get a, potentially one food from the bunting and then another one from the nightingale. Uh, really, really good. You kind of look at the end of round goal layout as well. Uh, they're all kind of egg or grasslands related. So um, that kind of tells me straight away, um, you know, I'm going to be looking at building up a grasslands engine. So that's always something to consider definitely um, when you are kind of picking that starting hand. You want to look at the end of round goals and think, right, what synergy can I get? Uh, between obviously the birds I've got uh, but also the bonus cards so speaking of which we can take a look at those um, okay that's quite a tricky one cartographer and behaviorist so obviously behaviorist one of these new European expansion ones uh, where you have to get a different power color in each row in a particular column so uh, yeah quite tricky I think um, if I am ever going to keep it it's normally at the start because it just gives you you know the rest of the game to work towards that and, and you've got plenty of time it's really not the kind of bonus card that you want to be picking up round three or round four when you've already filled up most of your columns and you really don't have that kind of flexibility so um, it is always a big gamble i think as well normally that first column you try and get some real strong brown power so you're already restricting yourself there um, but it's still possible to get you know three points just from hitting one column so um, that is potentially an option but i think i will look at the tray first and kind of consider my options there as well so um yeah pretty nice tray as well to be honest forster's turn i think that's a pretty straightforward grab so obviously you know go back to the starting hand i've got the the grass unsorted and obviously the food source at the same time um but yeah no real card draw no wetland options so yeah being able to have that forster's turn in the tray uh, that's kind of a no-brainer and of course with that star nest it's really going to help with those first two end of round goals and even the third one as well since it does get in the wetland so um yeah i think in terms of the birds and the food and definitely that first turn picking up uh, the forces turn in the tray is going to be straightforward the only real question is going to be on this bonus card now as i said i think normally you are going to fill that first column with brown powers and uh, yeah particularly here if i know i'm going to be picking up and playing that forces turn that's already two brown powers in that first column so kind of restricts that and uh, yeah, I think I think I'm going to go for cartographer. I think it is a bit frustrating because again, I don't really have 
any birds that are, that are going to meet that. I mean, I don't think even any of the other birds that are in my hand are going to meet that as well. But, you know, you only need to play two birds for that. Whereas, obviously, for the behaviorist, you need to play three, uh, one in each row of a particular column. So it just makes it a little bit more easier. And even, you know, four birds for seven points is pretty doable. So I think we're going to lock that decision in. But, uh, yeah, I'm curious to hear, you know, what you guys would have done here. If there's anything different, obviously, for me. Uh, as soon as that bunting is there, I'm going to grab that. So this is not staged at all uh, before you start questioning it. This is just luck of the draw on that first uh, game, I guess. But yeah, curious to see what other directions you could go in here. I mean, certainly this yellow hammer in the first round, always an interesting prospect. And uh, yeah, you know, if you can get it down really, really early in the game and just unlock all those extra birds being played, uh, that is a, a real nice option to have. So definitely could come into consideration um, but yeah for me i think as soon as i can get these two grass and birds down get the food and obviously the turn in the tray as well as i said really really nice so yeah we will lock those decisions in and uh, as i said i think it's probably quite straightforward so uh, obviously the tray at the moment not necessarily the best for the bunting but um yeah i think it's still going to be worth going for and uh you know hopefully I can get something that can reset the bird feeder or my opponent is going to do that as well. So first turn, obviously, we're going to grab this force's turn, see what replaces it. Mountain Bluebird, nothing uh, too spectacular there to look at. So I'm not overly worried about that. What is the AI doing? Oh, they're going bold with the Greater Flamingo. So um, yeah, this is, again, one of these new European expansion powers. Uh, really, really tricky to, to kind of get that one right, I feel. Uh, you get a tuck every time your opponents activate their wetlands. So, yeah, in theory, early in the game, you know, I'm going to be doing lots of drawing, so that is going to help them. But obviously, three food cost, and uh, they now don't have a forest bird, so quite a tricky one to to get right necessarily. But um, yeah, don't think too much that changes what I'm going to do now. The key decision here really is: do you play bunting first, or do you play nightingale first? Now. Playing bunting first is a risk because there's only one worm there. If I play the bunting and the worm's taken, then I can't gain any food to then play the nightingale. Uh, but equally, obviously if I use the nightingale earlier, I'm going to be giving food away to an opponent that doesn't have any kind of food source at the moment. So that is a risk in itself. Um, but yeah, I think the safer play is to get the nightingale down first. So we'll do that. We will use... A worm, I think, although it probably doesn't make too much of a difference since we are going to activate that nightingale anyway. And so, yeah, then we can lay eggs next, we'll get a worm. And then if we want to play the bunting then uh, before we lay eggs again, that is just an option to have. So, yeah, there we go. AI already drawing birds, but obviously uh, if I can delay this drawing birds option uh, that I'm going to have, that's just going to really prevent them getting the tuck. So, as I said, we'll lay eggs, we'll get the worm. And, uh, yeah, this kind of first round, at least for me... It feels pretty safe, pretty sort of on rails. I always like these kind of first rounds where you know, it's normally not too many decisions. You know, you're playing birds, you're using the food you've got, you're sort of generating extra food. And then obviously really it's all going to be about getting this turn down and then uh, just drawing some cards and seeing what we get. So here we go. We can indeed get the worm. And uh, I, think I'll go, I think I'll go for a seed just because it's something different. But obviously that nightingale, uh, it's got a lot of flexibility. So... Uh, it can give me some other options as well, but um, yeah, kind of quite straightforward here. Oh, well, I was going to say that, but always is the case when you have a good plan <laughs> is that something comes up uh, in the tray to derail that plan. So yeah, that Violet Green Swallow, that's too good. That's too good to leave in the tray. So I will grab that and uh, I do still have enough turns to be able to uh, do everything else I wanted. Uh, really the key absolutely get this forces turn down and uh, yeah then i'm going to be laying eggs on that forces turn and uh obviously making sure i can qualify for the center round goal so i don't think my opponent no they do not have any platform nests so for me really really straightforward just get those two eggs in there and uh yeah obviously sadly not in a position to use the bunting here but we can get uh, a worm at least for the swallow here and uh, yeah, hopefully look to get the other one in the next round and get this down really, really quickly. So there we go. Very, very nice. With the first end of round goal, uh, get those four points in the bag. So yeah, here we go into the second round. 
and to my opponent. Uh, they have got their forest started at least with the Hooded Warbler, so um, hopefully they will be resetting this bird feeder a little bit and just helping out my bunting. So um, yeah, this is the point at which I will pause. Uh, I will let you think about how that first round went. Uh, from my perspective, I think that was pretty good. You know, you, you got three strong brown powers down, you got a good card source, and obviously this Violet Green Swallow in the hand as well. Uh, that's going to be really, really nice. Obviously helps for this end of round goal, um, but just these tuck and draw birds, uh, so, so good. So um, yeah, kind of an interesting first round, obviously, as I said, uh, as we would go through that, a lot of the decisions kind of felt on rails, but then obviously uh, when something does come up in the tray, it is always nice to have that kind of spare turn or two to be able to do something like that and be able to react uh, without completely you know, ruining your plans for being able to, to qualify or an end of round goal or something like that. So um, yeah, let me know what you would have done in that position. You know, would you have kept the same birds? Maybe you would have played them in a different order. You know, would you have gone for the swallow or would you have really focused on playing this forces turn um, you know, that little bit sooner and just getting that extra card draw? I'm really curious to hear um, how you would have approached that. But um, yeah, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sort of fast forward through the rest of the game until we get to that final round. And uh, yeah, then I'll bring you back in the room and uh, we can talk about how the setup looks and uh, what potential options we have in that final round. So yeah, see you all in a bit. All right, and here we go, we are back. So we are at the start of the final round. We have got our five turns left. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see how this board has evolved. So obviously we did manage to get that Violet Green Swallow down, which is very nice, getting some of the tuck cards, obviously scoring points, but also turning some of those other cards that we maybe didn't want to play uh, into other good ones to play and i think we found some pretty good ones so obviously the the turtle dove that was good got the bonus card uh, although it did draw the visionary leader so um, not the best bonus card but you know that might factor into the decisions here uh, in this final round so um yeah that helped towards the cartographer and uh, alongside that so did the Baltimore Oriole so um, yeah Baltimore Oriole really really good this is exactly the kind of bird uh, that I look for when I'm going with the indigo bunting because obviously the, the bunting power you get worms and cherries that's exactly the food that you need to play the Oriole so nine points uh, you know obviously a lot of points on its own but then helping towards my bonus card really really good as well and uh, yeah we also got the woodstock down so again another bonus card giving bird uh, got the historian so again not amazing but uh, you know two points um, it's certainly not bad and yeah do you know at the moment we've got three points from this bonus card two from this one maybe we can get to four points from this one as well so um, there are definitely some options here in this final round so we'll take a look at how the end of round goals have gone obviously we have won all three of them uh, that does tend to be the case against the ai and we are on 75 points so really really strong total uh, obviously a little bit of co-op uh, with the Nightingale, uh, although you'll see kind of from my opponents, well, they haven't really been doing uh, any co-op at all. Obviously, uh, this Flamingo, that's been their real main source of points. Uh, obviously trying to maximise on whenever I've drawn cards, they get all those extra tuck cards. And uh, yeah, they then use that to play birds like the Sparrowhawk. And uh, obviously any extras are getting tucked uh, in the grass and under this Chaffinch. So... Yeah, in terms of this final end of round goal, uh, obviously we do have a slight lead there, but it might need to be something that we have to consider in terms of, you know, do we try and get another grass and bird? Obviously, with the three in our hand, we don't have any at the moment, so uh, always a bit of a tricky choice there. But uh, yeah, I want you to tell me what you think you would do in this position. So as I said, five turns left. Um, there is always going to be a bit of uncertainty in terms of you know, are you going to draw cards? Maybe you get something worth playing from there. Uh, but I think there are still some options in the hand to work with. And uh, obviously, this is a slightly different scenario for the final round in that normally what you would do is just lay eggs a bunch. Uh, but we actually don't have any egg spaces here. So definitely that first turn uh, isn't going to be laying eggs. Uh, you're going to have to take another action. So um, yeah, do post in the comments. Let me know what you would do. But uh, in the meantime... I'm going to run through uh, how I would approach this scenario. So, um, yeah, just kind of, as I said, my initial thoughts when looking at this are I'm not going to be laying eggs, certainly not for this first turn. Um, that is not really an option now. You kind of see maybe from the, the final couple of turns in the previous rounds, 
uh, I did line up to get the food for this canvas back. So I'm kind of just thinking with this visionary leader, bonus card, um, obviously this gives egg space as well. Uh, let's me draw some extra cards. Um, obviously, yeah, like I said, helps the visionary leader, but maybe I get something else worth playing. So um, that's a good option. I would like to play this red knot as well. Um, but just the way the kind of the bird feed has been going, not necessarily always having worms and uh, them just restricting me to be able to get worms from the nightingale. It has been a bit trickier than I expected. So um, yeah, that might not be possible to get down, uh, but it is a good one, especially with the visionary leader as well. Obviously you, you lose a bird when you play it, but you get to draw one back. So um, that always helps as well. So uh, Judah Petitna is probably not going to be played, but again, um, you know, that's just kind of the bird to be tucked uh, if we do need to lay eggs and we do get some good ones. So, as I said, I think my plan here is to play this canvas back. Definitely one of the more unusual plays, uh, this kind of brown power in the final round. But um, yeah, I think with the food that I was getting and obviously it generates that bit of egg space as well. Um, yeah, I just feel like that's kind of uh, necessary here in this position to uh, to try and make sure um, that we've got egg space legs, but also if we do choose to draw cards. Uh, obviously at the moment we have got two cards, so if we draw cards we can get three, we can get up to that threshold. Uh, but equally we could actually, uh, you know, discard and get up to six, and then we still have one to play. And, uh, and still hit this visionary leader lower threshold at least. So I think um, I am going to draw cards at some point, but for now, as I said, uh, I do have this tip mouse, so I can at least tuck that. Uh, so we'll do that. So we'll tuck the tip mouse. Can we get something good? Not really an option to consider. So obviously, re-roll on the bunting. We are getting some worms here, which is good. That is potentially going to come into play uh, with this red knot. So always uh, a nice option to have. So what's my opponent doing? They played the Osprey. They are laying eggs. They obviously still do have a bit of egg space and presumably some cards to be tucking. So yeah, I'm going to need to be wary. They might play another bird here. And uh, yeah, it's not the end of the round, but uh, I don't really have the good cross options to consider that. But yeah, I think with three tens left, what I'm thinking is I draw cards, I lay eggs, and then I play the red knot. Uh, with the extra worms I'm getting or I look to play something better um, instead so if I do play the red knot obviously that gives me a card back so I'd still be left on two cards and then yeah you know the the lower threshold for the five cards only needs to draw three so uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to draw two to start see what we get okay nothing really that exciting we'll discard the egg we'll draw another one oh okay now, Cerulean Warbler doesn't hit any of those bonus cards. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's worth playing over the Red Knot. I think, obviously, if I want to play the Cerulean Warbler, I would then have to activate the canvas back here, and that is going to give a card to my opponent, which, uh, yeah, with their Chaffage, that is going to become a point. So, obviously, you have to bear that in mind. Um, but it does give me two bonus cards, whereas the Red Knot's only going to give me one. I think the Red Knot here is the, is the play, so I'm going to skip that. Obviously, we do get to look at another card. California Quail, not uh, the play in this position, so you can go. And yeah, there we go. That's got us up to our five cards for the Visionary Leader, uh, which is very, very nice indeed. So um, yeah, we're going to lay eggs here. We've got three egg spaces. We can fill those up. We can do one last tuck with the Gull. Nothing worth playing there. We'll get the extra worm, and because we have all the food we need, we can skip this nightingale at the end. And uh, yeah, we'll see what my opponent has done. They've gone for cards, <laughs> giving me a free fish. I could have maybe used that earlier, uh, although obviously out of egg space anyway, so discarding wasn't an option. But uh, yeah, doesn't change what we're going to do. We'll play this red knot, and we're going to pray, pray for a good bonus card. I'll take it. Brentology is for two points. I will take it. So it doesn't matter what we draw here. Yeah. We'll keep any of those for the visionary leader. And yeah, there we go. It's a clean sweep in the end of rounds, uh, which, as I said, against the AI is uh, always a little bit easy to do, but certainly uh, still very, very satisfying. And obviously, I think the starting hand helped with that. You know, it's kind of part of the discussion. Obviously, keeping the grass and birds, keeping the forces turn, that definitely helped there. So. Uh, always good to 
yeah, get those 22 points from the end of round goals. But here we go. Let's go into the scores. It should be a win here. Um, I don't think that was in question, just kind of based on the board that, that AI was setting up there. But um, yeah, obviously for us, it's just kind of a question of, yeah, do you optimize fully? Are there any points that were missed? I think particularly that last round, you can kind of go back and look through all the options. But here we go. 103 points to 81 in the end. So pretty happy with that. Uh, obviously, you know, we looked at the score before that fourth round that it was already on 75. So not a huge point scoring fourth round. But yeah, there wasn't a huge lot of egg laying to do there. Uh, obviously, I had kind of done most of my egg laying uh, in round three, at least just getting the food and getting the cards to set up uh, going into that final round. So yeah, we'll just take a final look at the board and the bonus cards. Obviously, not the greatest bonus cards. Uh, I think it was 11 points from four, which is definitely on the low end. Um, but yeah, just I guess having that option of being able to draw cards, see what we get, and then have the visionary leader as the backup to get some points was nice. And uh, yeah, historian and rodentologist, I think those are two pretty good bonus cards. So um, definitely only scoring two from each of those is a bit of a shame. Uh, but equally, you know, three points from cartographer. I, if I look back at the decision at the start, uh, behaviorist, yeah, I would have got zero from that. So I'm happy with that decision. Uh, as I said, I think always kind of easy to just get those two birds. Uh, obviously, the turtle dove and the oriole were kind of good birds in their own right to be playing. Um, so yeah, to have them help for a bonus card as well, always good to have there. So yeah, there we have it. So I hope you were able to put in the comments below what your approaches would have been in each situation there, both in the starting hands and that final round. So always good to see i want to see some discussion uh, i will definitely be in the comments going through some of the options that we had here and uh, yeah you know hopefully one of you has found a way to approach this better than me and we can take a look through that and see what the options are but for now thank you very much for watching uh, if you enjoyed this style of video please let me know as i said trying out something new so uh, always kind of keen to get some feedback and see what your views are and uh, yeah hopefully you can you know do some more interesting strategy stuff like this i know it's quite a popular thing to be looking at so yeah hopefully i'll see you again sometime soon in the next video